I've been doing reading, and you've been doing the church. And we come together as a union. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the man of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And then he said to me, Where are those that are gone? I will tell you the mystery of the woman, and of the beast that carried her, which has the seven gates and the ten horns. The beast that I saved was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into the prediction. And that all the dwell in the shell wonder, whose names were not written in the book of, from the foundation of the world. And when they behold the beast of it, that was, and is not, and yet is. And there are uh, seven kings, five of fallen, and one of one is, and the other is not yet become, and when he cometh, it might continue to show peace. And the beast that follows, and the beast that follows, even the beast that follows, and the beast that follows, and the beast that follows, and the beast that
and decided all by yourself to raise us up and allow us to see another day. For this, we say thank you. A brand new day, a day that we haven't experienced before and is yet before us. So, Father God, we come at this time to acknowledge that we have sin in our lives. We've allowed our transgressions, our iniquities, and our sins to be berated before you. Father God, we're sorry. We repent of these sins that we have committed before thee. And we're asking for more mercy, your grace, also for forgiveness of these sins. Sometimes, Father, traveling between I can do all things in this life and understand that all things work together. In between those two, Father God, we have fallen short. We have fallen short of ourselves, our families, our nation, Father God, and the church. Help us. Between those two bookends, divine heavenly Father, with this journey of life, We've come up short. But Father God, you have been with us every step of the way. When we've dropped to our knees with the burdens of our cares that we have in this life. Whether it be that we are grieving the loss of someone. Father God, help us with some peace and some comfort. This peace, this comfort. Father God, when you give it to us. It's the best for us. So thank you so much. When we have the turmoils of our life, dealing with our families, Father God, in a world that could care less about families, strengthen us. Help us to stand bold on your word, Father God, and let the world know there's a better way through your son, King Jesus. Divine Heavenly Father, there's son that are just dealing with some health issues. Father God, sometimes it will break them down, it will break us down to we go to doubting ourselves and doubting the advice that we get. God, you are better for us. You turn around and say, I got you. And you give us some comfort in mind. Thank you. You have delivered us out of the hands of a sick bed. You have raised us up to where we can walk back in and say, thank you, Jesus. When we was in the room all by ourselves. And you whispered in our ears with some peace and some comfort. For this, we say thank you. On this journey, there are many that have some financial struggles going on in their lives. Divine Heavenly Father, you know what's best. You will deliver that when you're pleased and when you're ready. Amen. Father God, this journey that we're on, we call life unpredictable. Divine Heavenly Father, we can lay down one day in good health and can't even raise ourselves up the next morning. This thing called life. Breaks us down with our family, our children. This thing called life. Father God helps us, help us to understand you are there. You carry us when we can't even carry ourselves in this thing called life. Divine Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the church. Where we can come together. We're all a sick. We all have situations going on in our lives. But we can come together, sing praises to you, yeah. pray to you, yeah. talk to you, yeah. fellowship one with another, yeah. encourage each other yeah. under the banner of Jesus Christ. For this, we say thank you with this thing called life. Life has been good to many of us. We first of all say thank you. As the song says, you don't know what I've been through. But one thing I do know, Father God, you know what every last one of us has been through. You the one. You give us the peace. You the one 
that give us comfort. You're the one help us to understand. You're the one that carry us when we can't even carry ourselves. For this, we say thank you. Jesus the Christ. Thank you so much for establishing the church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are chief. Amen. Come on, stop. Amen. Thank you so much for the sacrifice that you made for a group of sinners as ourselves. Yes. Father God, in Jesus Christ, in you we have freedoms. Yes. We have salvation. Yes. We have strength. For this we say thank you. Please continue to bless the body of Christ. Where it lives and it teaches your word. You have place in your church of Jesus. You have set forth there will be evangelists. There will be ministers to teach your word. I pray for all the ministers and evangelists that study your word. And they live your word. And then teach your word. Help us all, Father God, to go down into the deep treasures of your word. To study. To understand. To believe. To believe, to believe and to live it. Before we go to teach. Amen. Amen. I pray that we will let Christ show in our lives. Before we speak it in our lives. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the church. Elders, bishops, shepherds. Give them strength to stay in your word. Help me defenders of your word to lead the flock. Help them to understand they lead the flock by the examples that they set before us. Bless their household. Us deacons, wherever we may be. Help us to learn your word. Live your word. And then be servants to the church. And remember, from the youngest to the oldest, we're so grateful and we're so thank you that you've blessed us abundantly. You have blessed this congregation. Carver Road, Church of Christ. We're so thankful that you have brought us a mighty long way. We thank you for the fresh fruit that you're bringing into the congregation. Help us to encourage and strengthen them so they can grow and go out and bring others. We're just so thankful for everything that you do for us in our lives. Father God, we can never ever stop thanking you for being so good to each and every one of us to our families, to our church families, to our community, to our state, and to the United States of America. We thank you. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Let the Spirit of the Lord let it. Let the Spirit of the Lord
say it, but if you know God, you know it'd be good to everybody just to awaken us one more time. People are living, living here on every continent of every age for one reason or another. They're, they're living here young, they're living here elderly, 
they're leaving here saints, they're leaving here sinners, they're leaving here members, they're leaving here preachers. We're just thankful anytime God wakes us up and gives us one more day. We're thankful for the uh, Church of Christ on this morning and those who are in Christ Jesus. We have determined that they will be a city set on a hill. The salt of this earth is what the Bible calls us. We're the salt of the earth. We are a lamp for a lampstand. We are trying to live in such a way that men and women will see our good works and glorify the Father who is in heaven. And any time the church is working for the glory of God, that's a good thing. And uh, when all of the children of God, each one of the children of God, are doing whatever they can to build up uh, the faith, uh, the body of Christ, the people of God, and the kingdom of God, that is a good thing. We're thankful for the young adults who are able to be uh, with uh, us on Thursday night. Uh, we're thankful to Sister Treva, uh, Sister Treva uh, Oliphant, and uh, Brother Weathers for partnering up to bring uh, a young man who did an excellent job in presenting the message on, on Thursday night about, about Gideon and and we're just uh, encouraging uh, more of our young adults, I think is what they call it, young adults, uh, to, to join in uh, these uh, efforts. Because uh, I tell you, young adults, you, you may not realize it right now that much, but you ask some of these older people, they'll tell you, you need the Lord, right? Yes, you need the Lord. And, uh, and enjoy your youth, but walk, walk with the Lord during your youth. Now, I saw a post where some young person said, that uh, he or she had reached the age of 35 and that they were not, that they were now middle-aged adults. I said, you must be out of your mind. <laughs> 35, I'm a middle-aged adult. You better enjoy your youth, don't get in a hurry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had driven, my parents had driven from Irvine, California to Jefferson, Texas one summer, 1973, to visit my grandparents and I remember us being in the back of the car. And usually I was, as I usually do, I was in the back of the car at 13 and grandmother was there. We had gone out to fish that day. Of course, I hadn't caught anything. But we had gone out to, to fish and I was sitting in the back seat pontificating, you know, Grandma, I'm 13, won't be long. I'm 16 and I'm 21, I'm 35, 40. She said, boy, you better enjoy being young and don't get in a hurry to get old. Some of y'all old folk know, don't get in a hurry to get old. Enjoy your black hair while you can. Amen. <laughs> Enjoy walking upright while you can. Enjoy not all those aches and pains while you can, right? Remember when you just used to have breakfast, not breakfast and pills? Amen. <laughs> Enjoy your youth. Don't get in a hurry. Uh, to get older, God will take care of that. Get wiser, yes. but don't get in a hurry to get older. And while you are young, live to the glory of God. While you are young, remember, remember now thy creators in the days of your youth. And Solomon will say, before the evil days start coming, and he begins to enumerate things and list things that happen to you as you grow older. You can't see. Right? Sometimes you see an older person, they're trying to grab something to put on their face. You can't have here your favorite word because what? What do you say? What do you say? <laughs> You're not talking loud enough. And people across the street hear you. Amen. Can't see, can't hear, all of that. So enjoy your youth. And let me say this again. While you are young, serve the Lord. Serve the Lord while you're young. We'll be saying a little bit more about that on today. Good to see all of you who are new members and visitors today. We thank you. We're thankful for those of you who are here during the Bible school hour and all of our teachers who continue uh, to work in the Bible school department. We're thankful to the technology committee that continues to try to post this live stream. So that members who are unable uh, will be able, unable to be in the assembly, are uh, able at least to, to view the services. Now, uh, those who are unable to be in the assembly, we're praying God uh, for you, that he continue to bless you. 
those of you who are able to be in the assembly, I'm not praying for you to do better at home. I'm praying that God will move you. Don't y'all get quiet. Right is right. Move you to come to the assembly. Folk are seeing you somewhere everywhere in the community. Yeah. And you're driving all over the place. You're holding hands with the mayor and talking with council people. Doing some everything. You had David Busters on the machines. Ordering salmon and salmon. <laughs> Get up on Sunday morning and come out to the assembly and show how good the Lord has been to you. Now, if you're unable, we, un we understand. But so forth. everybody, everybody who doesn't come, y'all understand this? Everybody who doesn't come is not because they're not able. Y'all, y'all got that percent, right? So we're just giving you a word, word of encouragement, a word of encouragement. Stay safe. Same kind of, and a word of encouragement. I meant to help it hurt you. You know, you broke down on the highway, and you in the car with somebody about and three or four other people, and somebody said to you, "Don't run across that." That, that highway, they're not trying to hurt you. You better not run out there in the track. I don't like that negative stuff. Don't run in the hall. Okay, go. <laughs> See what I have been playing, playing in the road. And so we want to encourage you to come on. We have a good number here, uh, even on this morning, with that little number for you. Today. <laughs> Matthew 28 and verse number 18 is where we shall be. We have been here. The last five weeks, and we're hoping that the text has become, is becoming familiar to you as we have talked about evangelism. And by evangelism, what we mean is sharing God's truth with, with others. The Bible reads, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Let me pause here and say it to the uninitiated, or perhaps to those who are who are not aware, in uh, this present world, all power belongs to Jesus Christ. You get that? All power belongs to Jesus Christ. All power is not in the government of the United States or any other government. All power is in Jesus Christ. All power is not in the Supreme Court. Power is with Jesus Christ. All, all power is not in the legislature, it's not in the Congress. Thank God that all power is not in the executive office. All power is in Jesus Christ. All power is not in your community leaders, no matter who they are. The power is in Jesus Christ. In the church, the power is not in the preacher, it's in Jesus. In the church, the power is not in the elders or the deacons, it's in Jesus. All power in the church is not in the mothers of the church, it's in Jesus. It's not a big papa or big mama, it's in Jesus. All I'm saying is we need to remember in this, this present age that when you talk about who has the power, Jesus has the power. So he comes to his apostles and he says to them, listen guys, all power in heaven and earth has been given unto me. And that's who should have it, Jesus should. Could you imagine how terrible any one of us would be if we could say it? Imagine me walking up to you saying, all power in heaven and earth is in me. You want to fight right then and there. You don't have any power. But Jesus rightfully says, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me, and because I have all power, listen to what he says, because I have all power, what I want you to do is I want you to go, ye therefore, and uh, preach, teach all nations, baptizing them. Jesus, you have, you have the power. What do you want us to do? Make everybody rich and all. Jesus, you have the power. What do you want us to do? Make everybody the wisest on earth, and that'd be nice. But what I really need you to do, Jesus is saying, I need you to go and teach all nations. I know in the religious world this next part is disparate, but it's what Jesus says to do. He says, teach all nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Don't, don't let anybody in religion fool you. Baptism is an important moment in the life of anybody who comes to Jesus. Don't let anybody tell you different. Baptism accomplishes what Jesus says it does. In baptism, I'm thankful. Sins are remitted in baptism. In baptism, sins are washed away in baptism. In baptism, a child of God is justified, sanctified, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb in baptism. In baptism, I put on Christ Jesus. Don't let anybody in the religious world tell you all you have to do is believe in your heart that God Jesus says, I got all power. And I want you to go and teach, and not only teach, I want you to baptize them. In teaching them, once they get baptized, don't send them on their way, you never see them again. Once they're baptized, they need to be taught. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded. You see who gets to make the commands? Whatever I have commanded. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. I want to talk about that this morning. That is, Jesus says, unto the end of the world. Even unto the end. Now, thematically, we have been talking about going ye therefore. This morning, even unto the end. And I want to remind the children of God that there are some people who will go with you a long way. Some people will go with you part of the way. Some folks will go with you as long as you are doing them favors. But don't ever forget, Jesus will be with you until the end. Won't he? He'll be with you always. There ought to be somebody who's done a good Three score and ten who can testify this morning that Jesus will stay with you. Somebody out of a head hit four score this morning who can say, Yes, if it had not been for Jesus, I would not have seen these 80 years. Hope somebody get close to 90 and you still testify that he's good to you. And that you are where you are, even today, because Jesus was not with you in the beginning but he stayed with you through every stage of your life and you live with your assurance that he's with you until the end. I tell you he's a good friend. He might decide to be absent when the storms rage. Jesus is more than a friend who is there for years of full. Y'all remember your fifth grade friends? We'll always be friends. The same adult becomes somewhat disturbed when remembering that though there was a great friendship in fifth grade, by the time tenth grade came, the once close friend hardly speaks to you. Hardly speaks to the other. You know, things change even from elementary school to middle school. You have to tell your friend in the sixth grade, why are you acting, asking, why are you acting funny? You change. You lost your mind. Things change. Friends change. And for you thought would be with you all of your life, you'll find that they will leave you. Work associates begin a new job together. While at work, they compliment each other. They, they help each other to succeed. Uh, they imagine the same partnership will exist until the end, until that moment of retirement. But this does not happen. After several years, one announces that a new and better position has become available. And the individual determines to take advantage of the opportunity and is not with you on the job until the end. In church settings, even adult uh, ministry partners began single. Some of you all who've been married for a while now, you ought to be able to think back to when you were single. Amen. Now, don't think back and say, I wish I were there. I'm just saying you ought to remember when you were single, before you had the children, before uh, you had the husband or the wife. Remember that? The good times you might, might call them. And, uh, and you and other families started uh, in the church together as young people. You celebrate the growth and expansion of each other's family. You share fellowship meal, Bible class time, major church events. You're there for each other as your children grow older, as parents age and death invade. You assure each other that you'll always be there for one another, even until the end. But the challenges of life 
become overwhelming for, for one. And there's a move away from the routine and fellowship. What's held as dear? Over and again in life, what we would like to experience until the end, what we imagine and dream about until the end, what gives us comfort about the end somehow diminishes and does not reach the ultimate moment that uh, enjoys what it would have been like to maintain until the end. What a different world it would be if we could imagine all of life even unto the end. Let me interject here again that though you, your friendship with your classmates may not endure, though your association with your work partners may not endure, though your church relationship will even change, always remember Jesus will be there until the end. People will come and go. Circumstances will come and go. Opportunities will come and go. But let's say this about Jesus. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is there until the end. That's why God will walk with him. That's why God will trust him. That's why if you don't trust anybody else, you don't walk with anybody else, you don't love anybody else, you have at least put all your effort in the loving Jesus with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You Jesus to be with you until the end. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying uh, serve it like your mind is right too. Yes, Amen. Yes, you live life, you, you come to find out that when you get older, your mind leaves you. Yeah. Anybody experience that? I don't know. <laughs> serve Jesus while you have a good mind. While you can remember things. And I'm telling you, how we look at the end determines how we live the meanwhile. If I don't have my end right, then my meanwhile won't be right. What a different world it would be if we could manage all of life even unto the end. We would give confidence to our spouses. We would be protection for our children. We'd be consistent strength to our friends. We would provide assurance to our brothers and sisters in Christ. Our lives would be different if we live by the assurances of the end. If we trusted that Jesus would do exactly what he said he would do. Yeah. We could manage it to the end, perhaps. We would not abandon the good. We would not give up on those we love. We would, not, we would hang in there a little more. Try a little harder. Wait a little longer. Endure more hardship. Yeah. Find some peace through turmoil. Find the will when everything is against us. What we admit is that we would have lived differently, more victoriously, with better expectation if we just trust Jesus until the end. And another thing, let's learn to wait on the Lord. Amen. Don't get ahead of the Lord Jesus Christ. Learn to wait on the Lord. You get out in front of Jesus, you mess up your life. You destroy your life. You detour your life. Learn to wait on the Lord and to do so until the end. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I find themselves in a whole lot of trouble. Because Jesus didn't, they didn't wait on Jesus to do something for them. They took a job because they didn't want to wait till Jesus gave them a job. They went in a certain direction because Jesus was not moving fast enough. They formed partnerships because they didn't trust that Jesus would show up. I want you to understand, he'll show up. And when he shows up, It'll be on time. It may not come when you want it. But whenever Jesus shows up, it's time for him to be there. Jesus provided in focus assurances to the apostles. This must have served them well as they embarked upon the task of evangelism. A task never before assigned or acted upon in history. Matthew 19. Evangelism called on the apostles to travel with a message none previously responded to no obeyed. Luke 24, 47 beginning at Jerusalem and going unto the uttermost parts of the world. Evangelism called upon the apostles to establish communities that had not previously existed. Understand that a community ah, is blessed when it has good institutions in the community. Yeah. When it has places to help the homeless, that's a blessed community. When it, when it has places to help the sick, that, that's a blessing to the community. Good institutions help the community, whether it's the NAACP or uh, other things. Good institutions bless 
the community. Well, we have to understand that when the gospel comes, an institution is established that blesses the community. Wherever the church is, the community ought to be better. Oh, I just said something, you missed it. I said, wherever the church is, the community ought to be better. Wherever the church is, the light ought to shine brighter. Wherever the church is, wisdom ought to be greater. Wherever the church is, people ought to have direction. The church, amen, ain't nobody listening, is a blessing to the community. That's the reason we ought to love the church. Stand up for the church. Be dedicated to the church. Be faithful in the church. The church is a blessing to his community. The Bible says Jesus loved the church, gave himself for the church, that he might sanctify it, cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself, a glorious church. Ah, that was church. Ah, also rain church. Ah, no good church. When Jesus looks at the church, he sees a glorious church, a glorious institution. Now you ought to praise God for the church. I tell you, what we need in our generation, we need some folks who love the church. I know you love athletic, but love the church. I know you like social awareness, but love the church. I know you give your best for other things, but do it for the church. Where are the people anymore who love the church? <laughs> Dedicated to everything else. Zealous about everything else. Giving all to everything else. Going out of the way for everybody and everything else. I'm asking again, where are the folk who love the church? Love it enough to show up. Love it enough to grow in. Love it enough to help with it. Love it enough to serve it. Love it enough to give it time. Not just on Sunday morning, but do it like you do some other stuff. Tell folk, whenever you need me, whenever you need me, I'll be there. Where the folk who love the church enough to say, whenever some help is needed, I'll be there. And I'm not going to think of the church only in terms of what it can do for me. I'm asking, what can I do to build up the church? <laughs> Pandemic, saying all this silly stuff <laughs> about you know they're not coming back to the church. I wonder, you know, it's a new reality. You know, church ain't what it used to be. Says you. I'm looking at the folk who still love the church. Now, I want you to understand this. I already know. There'll be more outside than there will be inside. But I also know this, greater is the number with the church than those that are with our enemies. Let the world say what it will. But I want you to understand this morning, the church ain't going anywhere. I may leave here, but the church is going to be here. I'm going to tell you something about God. He'll always find him somebody to serve him. It may not be you, it may not be me, but God is always going to find him somebody. He told Elijah when Elijah said, God, I'm the only one left that pulled down your altars. Everybody's forsaking you. And God said, listen, Elijah, I reserve for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. I want you to understand, a lot of young folk may leave the church. A lot of middle-aged folk may leave the church the noise it doesn't affect me like I see it affect other people because I know our word is not the last word the question always remains is there any word from the Lord it's about what Jesus says we can have all the men's meetings we want all the ladies get together that we want all the youth meeting that we, we can say all the stuff we want to say about why folk won't serve God, why folk don't love God, why the church doesn't say what we want, we just talking nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Let me remind you again that dude got all the power. 
the name of Jesus. Jesus. Not Jeff. Jesus. Not Jesse. Jesus. Not Charlie. Jesus. And I'll tell you something else. When you come here this morning, you don't want to leave here with anybody's words. But the words of Jesus. Tell you that people will say anything. But this ain't the people's house. Just the Lord's house. And a lot of folk won't fool themselves thinking it's all over. Nobody gonna say it. Nobody's going to give anything to him. They're going to fool themselves. They're going to be out there with the world. And the saints are going to continue to go marching in. And God stayed with his people, folk. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not that old. Amen. I'm not that old. <laughs> I had to wonder this morning that I ain't got that. Haircut. I got my haircut down south. Because I was looking like I was living in the woods and stuff. <laughs> and so at the ADM service, Sister Bridges asked the church to pray for me. I said, Well, that haircut must really be saying something. So he need prayer. <laughs> I appreciate that, yeah. But before, well, we're here to learn what Jesus says. Because our own minds can fool us. And the folk around us will have us deceived about what's really going on. We get to pontificate and run out of miles. And before we are all discouraged, we're not half showing up to church. We won't show up to events. That's just a listening out there in the world rather than listening to Jesus. Somebody said, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You believe really that? He said, Jeff, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Christian, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. What about when trouble comes? I, I never leave you. Yeah. Nor forsake you. Yeah. What about when I don't like the president? I never leave you. Nor forsake you. Yeah. What about when all folk can come to his 19, COVID 19? I never leave you. Yeah. Nor forsake you. Jesus. Don't spend all your time listening to them come on. and forget to listen to him. Who is your son? Who you listen to will be demonstrated by how you take a step. You ought to ask the Lord to order your steps and direct your steps because folk are watching your steps. Let Jesus be your guide. Let me, let me, let me move on. Let's get it close to KW time. We need to recognize a task that we have anticipated up to this point in this series. To this point, we have acknowledged that evangelism expects that when the gospel is preached, a change comes. When folk walk into the assembly, I'm preaching, saying to people, that regardless of where you have been and what you have done, regardless of what people have said about you and the routines you have established in your life, when you meet Jesus, it's possible that a change can come in your life. You don't have to be who you used to be. You don't have to do what you used to do. You don't even have to think like you used to think. Let Jesus in and a change will come. You have may have thought all your life, I can't do any differently. I tell you, this morning, turn it over to Jesus. See if he can't make a difference. We explored that through the thought that Jesus would be with his people through the difficult task of preaching the gospel as a cold call event. What I mean by that is everybody you talk to about Jesus, 
will not be your, your kinfolk, won't be your relatives, won't be your friends. Sometimes you just need to share Jesus before you walk up on that. Have you heard the story about a Savior who loved us better than we love ourselves? And let them know you're talking about Jesus. And then people, let's make sure we make a distinction between inviting people to come to us as if we're the same. Encourage them to come to Jesus. Because as long as they think it's about us, they don't have an excuse because they know we're not perfect, don't they? They know we do wrong. They, they know we don't talk right. But they can't say that about Jesus. Jesus never did anything wrong. Jesus never did anything to hurt anybody. Jesus has always been better to everybody than they've been to themselves. Even right now, Jesus is blessing folk who don't care a thing about them. Let them know they're coming to Jesus. And they need Jesus. Hey, it's a call call event, but know this. And Jesus says, I'll be with you. When we turn our focus on teaching them, the Bible says that you teach them whatsoever I have commanded you. They need to understand that you don't ever know enough. I don't ever live long enough. I will never have enough experiences in life that I don't need to be taught the word of God. I know we can read it, but we need to be in their teaching assembly where we can share with others. There is no such thing as a faithful child of God who is not a part of the regular meeting of their sin. I'm talking, I'm telling you what Jesus said. What Jesus, Jesus demonstrated. Now I'm not just saying out there in the world, your mind is right. All that doesn't matter, that's your own talking. World. But that's not what Jesus said. Jesus knows what we need. And what he has said is, listen, he said, we need a symbol. And assembly, when you think about the fact that I got to be in assembly on Sunday morning, that will help you to understand why you don't need one more drink. Right? That's right, you be at church saying what you didn't want to say. Tell them what you didn't want to tell. Folk know you to be grumpy and grouchy and all of a sudden you're at church, you happy as well. You know you're going to the assembly, you want to live right. And a child of God who loves Jesus, loves the church, and shows up at a sinner. Acts 11, 25 and 26, Paul loved the church, Barnabas loved the church. The Bible says a whole year they assembled with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. You need church. But not just church people, you need assembly. You need assembly in your life. The Bible says, for a reason, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together, as the man of some in, but exhorting one another daily, and so much the more, as you see the day of birth, you need assembly because you need to be in a place where folk exhort you and encourage you to live for the Lord. Amen. Right. Where folk who love you will remind you of how to serve Jesus. And I want you to understand some church folk learn to do this. When folk, church folk are trying to encourage you, don't start not answering your phone. See? <laughs> All of a sudden, you can't get the text message. You can't listen to a recording. Because you don't want church folk Encouraging you to do this. Amen. Now you start doing it. You, here, here's the next thought. Once you start, well, I want people to ask me where I am and when I'm coming to another. Your next thought is the devil's got a hold of me. <laughs> because God's put that in the church to keep us focused. Yeah, yeah. I tell you, church folk, get beyond the place where somebody's got to hunt you. And get on the side of helping folk to find God's children to encourage them. Amen. 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 Be an encourager. Amen. You be the one right. to ask folk to give Jesus his or her own. Yeah. You be the example of what a, what a soldier of God looks like. Yeah. 
You be the one who has encouraged me that when everybody else is walking one way, you show them the way of the Lord. You be the one. Be the one that shows that Jesus comes first in your life. Amen. This particular edition, again, we ask our evangelism to focus that Christ must be presented as a lifestyle that lives with the blessings of Jesus being with the believers unto the end. Many things may change in life, but the presence of Jesus must never be one of those things. Stay with Jesus. The children of God are blessed to know that through changes in educational experiences, job experiences, even retirement, Jesus remains constant. Though friends come and go, though friendships don't last, Jesus is with the believer unto the end. Though life may call that one relocate, live where one never expected, be around persons who don't know their story, Jesus is there through it all. Thank God Jesus has been there. Jesus is there, and we depend on the Father to provide daily bread, Matthew 6, 11. He's there. Jesus is there, and we seek first the kingdom of God, expecting that he will provide food, shelter, and clothing, Matthew 6, 31 through 34. Jesus is there. Jesus is there as the enemy, and enemies anticipate our failures. Everybody that want to see you do well. But Jesus is there, and people anticipate our failures, celebrate our difficulties, seek to block our blessings, wish to turn our dreams into nightmares, and destroy our relationships. Jesus is there to say that when commitment to him is the cause, believers should rejoice and be exceeding glad. For so persecuted they the prophets that were before you. I'm sorry. Uh, this morning. But I got to let you know that serving Jesus is not always an easy thing to do. Everybody's not going to sing your praises. Everybody's not going to give you an applause. Everybody's not going to give you a standing ovation because you're serving Jesus. In our Bible class this morning, you should have been there. Brother Joel was reading from Luke 21 where Jesus assured them that even your own parents, your own family members, your own brothers and sisters when you follow Jesus will give you up to the world. Jesus said that you've got to learn to endure until the end. I want you to understand something. If we were running with the world, there'd be no problem. If we're just like the world, there'd be no problem. If we said what the world said and did, what the world did, there would be no problem. But whenever you end up on God's side, there's a chance you might have a problem. A lot of people are trying to be in Christianity and be like the world. I tell you, the church doesn't, the world doesn't need the church to be like the world. The world needs the church to be like Jesus. The world needs the church to stand out. The world needs the church to be different. The world needs to see a different level of commitment in the church. The world needs to say, let come and go what may. God's children hold on to Jesus Christ. Children are being gunned down in the streets. Folk are hooked on drugs and alcohol. Folk can't find their way. They don't know whether they are up or down, going or coming. And it's the church's responsibility to show them the way and help them understand that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. I'm saying, church, stop trying to be the world and just be the church. That's enough. Stop trying to run with them and run for Jesus Christ. That's enough. Stop trying to walk the broad way and walk the narrow way. That's enough. Folk don't need another worldly institution. The world needs a godly institution and godly people. And some church members, they're in argument with us. Some of us preachers, y'all too hard. Folk don't want to hear all that. They, they want a church that welcomes everybody, loves everybody. Well, when did you hear that the church doesn't welcome everybody? 
And the church doesn't love everybody. It does. But it does so on God's terms. And not our own. Because we didn't die for it, did we? We didn't shed our blood for it, did we? Finally, this morning, I want you to know that the faithful people will be faithful to the end. And if I were talking to those outside the church who are prognosticators about the church's demise, I would have them to know that the church is not going to end because Jesus said so. We're going to keep on showing up to worship. Aren't we? We're going to keep on Praise it, kiss me. We're going to keep on walking for the Lord. We're going to keep on putting Him first. We're going to keep on having Bible class. You're not going to stop us, will you? We're going to keep on coming to Bible class. We're going to keep on scheduling fellowship meals. And uh, we don't care how dry the chicken is, how dry the rice is, how thick the gravy is. How sweet the tea is. We're not getting together for that anyhow. We're getting together because we are the children of God. And we're celebrating the fact that Jesus died for us all. We're going to keep on spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Telling folk they need Jesus and standing up for the right. We're going to keep on baptizing folk in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We're going to keep the lights on. We're going to keep the building open. We're going to keep on we're going to do it until the end. Yeah. I'll come and go. What may. I'm going to tell you something else. And we don't even have a sense enough to be ashamed. I'm not ashamed to own that Jesus came and died on Calvary. That he came to secure a home for a sinner like me. I'll tell you. I don't know where you stand with God this morning, but you don't need to leave here not close to Jesus. Not right with Jesus. Not in Jesus Christ. Hey, preacher, what are you talking about? I'm close to Jesus. I'm right with Jesus. I'm talking about having done with what Jesus says. People want to come to Jesus on their terms. But they think it's right. Here's what, here's what you have to understand, what we all have to understand. Nobody's fit to come to Jesus until he or she's ready to give up and give over to Jesus. Just do what he says. What he says is when you come to me, you come believing that I actually came to earth and died for you. I was buried and I rose again. I've ascended to the Father and I'm seated at his right hand, governing the affairs of man with all power. You believe that's what Jesus did and that's what Jesus is doing. You be willing to turn your life over to Jesus, which the Bible calls repentance. Stop living like I want to live and live as Jesus has taught me to live. Acts 2, 30. Confess his name, Romans 10, 9 and 10. And then you're buried in baptism. When you're buried in baptism, the Bible says that's when you put Jesus off. Galatians 3, 26 says, we're all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For many of you, as have been baptized into Jesus Christ, they have put him on. When you put on Jesus, Jesus puts you in the family. And not just any family. He puts you in the family of God. He asked you to the body. He asked you to the church. No, not any church in every church. He only has one. Jesus only puts people in the church he builds. Let me say that again. He said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Now here, here we go. Jesus has built his church. And I run along and I build mine and call it the Jeffersonian church. You go there and I'm talking about Jesus, but it's the Jeffersonian church. I got you giving away book bags and bags of groceries, but it's the Jeffersonian church. I done told you to be with Jesus, all you got to do is believe in your heart and everything be good. That's the Jeffersonian church. 
And the question becomes, do you want to be in Jeff's church or the Lord's church? Here's something Jesus, Jeff can't ever do. Jeff can't put you in the Lord's church. Only Jesus can put you in his church. And when you get in Jesus, Jesus puts you in the family, the body, and the church. Now, you may not be accustomed to this, but here in the church, what we do is we sing a song that the preacher preaches in. If you need to be baptized, you walk far. We take a confession. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? When you say yes, we take you and we get you ready. We prepare the clothes and we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Because that's what Jesus says to do. And you'll leave here a son or daughter of God. But you have to be willing to let go and let God. Turn it loose and turn it over to Jesus. You will never do it as long as you try to control things. Take it to the cross, bring it to the cross. Leave it there. Then children of God, even though we're children of God, we get off sometimes. We start listening to the world, doing what the world does. We lose our commitment. We lose our steadfastness. We start okay and stuff Jesus doesn't okay. Excuse and stuff Jesus doesn't excuse. Even we need to come back to Jesus sometime. And ask him to revive our spirits and souls so that we live to his glory. If you need him this morning in any way, make a noise together we stand and sing and invitation song. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Yes, come to Jesus. Just now, just now. Just now. Come to Jesus. My Lord, come Jesus. to Jesus. Just, just now. now. You can come right now. He will say, oh, He will say, He will say, Jesus will. Yes, He will say, You just, just now. now. Just now, Jesus will. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you. you just now. One more verse. One more verse. Don't you doubt. Don't doubt him. Don't you doubt. Don't doubt him. Don't you doubt him. Just now. Just now. Just now. Just now. Don't, you doubt him. Don't you doubt him. Don't you doubt him. Just now. Church, I'm coming to you on behalf of Diane Heath. I was uh, I received the first call. Um, I think it's from Shannon. Um, her procedure went very well. Um, she's doing good. Continue to pray for her for uh, healing and speedy recovery. Um, I'm requesting prayer for myself for patience. I haven't had a child in my home in over 30 years, and 
Uh, the patience is flying thin. So please, uh, please uh, keep me in prayer. Um, and also, uh, when the show returns, the things that we have uh, implemented and uh, tried to instill in him, especially about going to worship, uh, when it's all about worship and not playing, uh, that uh, the people that, that are there in Houston would uh, show self Imagine. Brother Johnson. service. We've already prayed for her. So that, at this time, let's go to our Father in prayer for those who stood this morning. <clears throat> Father, this morning we thank you. You have been so good to us. You have blessed us in a mighty way. We, we thank you. Father, we come now on those who stood with requests on their hearts and things in, that they're dealing with in their lives. Father, we ask you to grant their request, Father, if it be your will. Bless them, Father. Strengthen them through this time that they may be going through turmoil, trials, and tribulation, Father. But you know, we realize, Father, that if we lean on you, everything will be all right. Yeah. Father, we come on behalf of Sister Jones, who asked for forgiveness for those things that she has occurred in her life and those things that she has done. Father, we ask you to continue to bless her, Father. Just thank you for your strength in, in her, Father. Just continue to be with her. Continue to be with her family, Father, as they go through this time. And Father, we come on behalf of Sister Thomas. We ask him for a prayer for Sister He who went through surgery. We thank you, Father, for bringing her through it. And Father, as she continue to heal, we ask you to continue to bless her, Father. Continue to give her strength as she return, Father. And being with Sister Thomas, as she continue to, to deal with a young person in her life after so many years. Father, give her patience. Yes. Father, thank you for her as she been the example for this young man. Bless her, Father. Bless those who are working with her, Father. Just continue to be with her during this time. Father, we come on behalf of Brother Johnson, who will be going through surgery. Father, we know that you are already in, the, in this operating room waiting on him to come there. So, Father, we ask you to bless those who will be performing the surgery. And, Father, just be with them as they go through the surgery, that they may, everything will come out all right. <laughs> Father, we come on behalf of Brother Hayes. He's dealing with some things in his life at this time. We may not know, but you know. And you're with him all the way. So, Father, we thank you for blessing Brother Hayes, blessing his life, Father. Strengthen him. Hold him up. Prop him up, Father. Yes. Yes. And Father, let him realize he has brothers and sisters here that you are already placed here to help him through this time. Mm -hmm. Father, just thank you for Brother Hayes. And Father, we come on brother, we have for Brother Fosler. We thank you, Father, for this young man. Father, we realize we saw him when he was young and as he grown older. We, we show, we are proud of the things that he has accomplished through his life, Father. And Father, we ask you to bless him in his career as in the military, Father. Father, we realize it's not easy on the family as well. And Father, we thank you for the family of Brother Foxworth. And Father, we thank you that you will continue to give this young man success in his career. Mm -hmm. 
Father, we come on behalf of Father as he asks prayer for his Father, as we, we continue to actually continue to strengthen Brother Foxworth as he's continued to, to be able to do more, Father. We know you're still in his life. You're still in control, Father. So we thank you. And Father, there are others who are going through things at the time. We just ask you to be with them as they go through this time. Bless them to recover from their sickness. Bless them to deal with whatever they're dealing with, with life that's been presented to them in their life journey. Just be with them, Father. And Father, we thank you for the church. We ask you to continue to bless the church. We know you said it would never go away. And we have confidence in that word, Father. So we thank you for the church. This prayer we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And just all we know we thank you for the prayers and for Sister Heath. The Lord has blessed her. Uh, and she and she is with us here on the day. Sister Heath. He's prosperous. We are reminded in 1 Corinthians, the chapter 16. I will read into your hearing. Now concerning the collection of the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him that there be no gathering when I come. We give you that opportunity. And this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are in a Of the life, death, 
the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at verse 23, and I should read into your hearing. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Father, we come just thanking you again for this day, just thanking you for the opportunity to partake of this bread. We do this, O Heavenly Father, in remembrance of thy Son, Jesus Christ, for the sacrifice that he made. In his name, we do this. Amen. Amen. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as all as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft, often as ye uh, eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Let us pray. Father, we come thanking you for this cup. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that it may be taken in remembrance of thy Son for the remission of sins. We do this in his name. Amen. To all our members at this time, if you would prepare your attendance cards, the ushers will collect them at this time. Trials talk on every hand, and we cannot understand it. All the ways that God will lead us to that blessed promised land. But if you guide us with the fire, and we'll follow till we die. We will understand it better by and by, and by, and by, and by, for when the morning comes, all the saints of God are gathering home, we will tell the story of how we overcome, we will understand it better. Anybody in the 
So thank you. At this time, Brother Cross, is there any other thing that you would like to? Okay, we are finished. Well, you say it's KW. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Have a blessed afternoon. Thank you.